We start with a slip knot on the hook, chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice that I'm making my chain loose. Also, I wanted to point out that the pattern says to work in the back loops of the chain, not in the back bumps. Some patterns tell you to turn the chain over and work into the back bumps. Please don't do that on this pattern because we're going to use the uh, beginning chain for an edging stitch later and it's easier to work that if you do it this way so pull up a loop in the second chain from the hook and in every chain back to the beginning By the way, I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook, which is smaller than normally used in Tunisian crochet, even though it's the right size for this yarn. Uh, you're often advised in Tunisian crochet to use a larger hook. However, in this particular pattern, we're not going to do the larger hook. I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, so we now have seven two, four, six, seven loops on the hook. Now we're working our return pass. Yarn over, pull through one stitch. Then yarn over, pull through two. Repeating until you have two loops left on the hook. Now, let me show you a sample this is a smaller sample of the same pattern, um, and this one is worked in acrylic yarn. And I want you to notice that um, the colors are carried up along the edge of the squares. And so I'm going to show you how I start those additional colors. So what I'm going to do is turn the piece over to the back and I have grabbed my medium color yarn and I'm going to tie it onto the chain, the, the uh, beginning chain over here at this end of row one before I finish the last stitch. And I use a smaller crochet hook because it's easier for me. I pull through one loop and I take the tail and I pull the tail through that loop and just make a knot. Now turning the piece back to the front, back to the front, over to the front I should say. Now I will Take the medium colored yarn and put it over the dark yarn and then yarn over and finish the stitch. Now look on the back and I'll show you what that did. That started carrying the medium color under the dark color on row one. Now we won't need the medium color until row eight, but we're going to capture it, so to speak, or carry it along the edge on every row. Okay, so row two, pull up a loop in every vertical bar. And on the last edge stitch, we're going to go under both strands along the edge Yarn over, pull up a loop. So we should have seven loops on the hook. Two, four, six, seven. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two.
till we have two loops left. And here's what I do. I need to put the carried yarn over the working yarn like this before I finish that stitch. Now if I keep doing that over and over again, I'm going to get a tangled up mess over here with my yarn balls. So what I do is, and usually I do this before, not after the last stitch, is I flip the whole thing over. Let me take out the last stitch and show you what I mean. So, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, now I've got this medium yarn back here. So what I'm going to do is take the whole mess and turn it around my hook like a Ferris wheel with the hook as the stable part of that maneuver. That keeps the yarn balls from getting twisted. And then I take the carried yarn, put it over the top of the working yarn, yarn over, and pull through the last two. Okay, now row three, same thing. Now I want to point out something important with this particular pattern. What you're trying to accomplish is squares, and the squares have to have the same number of rows as stitches, so seven rows, seven stitches. However, people typically make a Tunisian simple stitch taller than it is wide. Uh, in fact, if you look at videos on the internet, you'll see a lot of people yanking those vertical strands way tall. That won't work with this particular design. We need to keep those vertical bars short. So do not yank up on them. Keep them very close to the fabric as you pull them up. Seven vertical bars, yarn over, pull through one. Now on that particular chain, that first stitch of the row, row, we want a short stitch so we didn't yank up on it. But on the rest of these, we're working horizontal strands. And we need a little bit wider horizontal strands in order to get completely square piece. So notice how I'm pulling those horizontal strands pretty wide. I went too far. Okay, here we go. Last two strands on the hook. Flip it around like a Ferris wheel. Bring the carried yarn over the working yarn. Yarn over, pull through two. Let's look at the back. You can see that the carried yarn is going up through the strands on the back. And it'll be ready for us when we need it. And I'm going to go ahead and work a few more rows and come back. All right, I have seven rows and I'll show you how I count. Count the one that's still on the hook as the, a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I count the stitches along the edge. Okay, now I'm ready to change colors because for the eighth row I need the medium blue. So I am taking the dark color and putting it between my first two fingers to just keep it out of the way. And then I yarn over with the medium color and it's now ready to go. So, I'll work that square and come back. I'm almost finished with the seventh medium blue row, and I thought I'd show it to you in uh, this color because it's easier to see what's going on. Okay, now for the last row of each square, I have to take the working yarn and put it over between my fingers 
and then pull up the other color from behind and yarn over and pull through. So you can see how I've carried the other color up along the side of each square. Okay, I've now got three squares in the strip. I'm ready to work the last stitch of the seventh, I'm sorry, the third square. And since this is the last square in my strip for this small sample, I'm going to yarn over with both colors of yarn and pull through and I'm going to cut both strands. And I'm going to pull them out like that. Now we will close this row after we've completed the entire square. So just leave those hanging loose. We'll weave those in later. The next thing we want to do is start down at the bottom again. And this time we're going to start with the medium color, light color, and medium color. So we need to attach the medium color in the correct place down here at the bottom. So here's what I'm doing. I'm going to turn it over I'm sorry I'm not going to turn it over. I'm going to prepare a loop. I'm not putting a knot in it and I'm going to pull up the loop in the seventh chain of the beginning chain seven. So we need to count and make sure that we see clearly where we're supposed to pull this up. Um, because we worked in the back loop only of the beginning chain, we have a twisted, uh, several twisted strands um, remaining that haven't been worked into. So I'm counting the front one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I missed one here. Let me count this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that right there is where I want to pull up my loop. And I'm going to chain one. And I'm not going to tighten that down because that chain is the one we're going to work into when we come back the other direction. So I'm going to chain two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I made my chain loose because remember the horizontals are supposed to stay loose. Now, let me take these two strands of yarn and just give them a quick tie just one time to keep them stable. But remember, I don't want to, I want to make sure I still have seven chains. There's the seventh one that I've got my loop coming out of. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So I'm working in the back loop of the chain pull up a loop in every chain make sure i have 7 loops on the chain on the hook 2 4 6 7 and then i'm going to work into the stitch along the side. It's actually the end of a row, but it's the same thing as a stitch actually. So let's count backwards. I just want to make sure I get it in the correct stitch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that stitch right there is where we're going to work 
to pull up our eighth loop. And I don't want to work in the front loop. I don't want to work under the front loop and the back loop. Instead, I'm working in the back loop and there is a loop behind it, which pretty much usually I have to turn over in order to see it. And it requires a little bit of fiddling to get the hook in there. So do you see now I have two, my hook is under two strands, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now, to do the return pass, I yarn over and pull through two. I don't chain one because I've already got an edge along the left side of the square. So I pull through two on all the rest of these stitches until I get two loops on the hook. And this is where I need to introduce my next color just like I did before. So I'm turning it over using my skinny hook, putting it right there in that strand. Getting my light color of yarn. It's really not a whole lot lighter than the medium blue, but it is lighter. Pull it through and then take the tail and pull it through the loop that I just made, and then pull the tail all the way through. And I've basically made a knot. Now, turning back to the front, I take the light yarn and put it over the medium yarn just to hold it there and finish the stitch. So let's look at the back of that. I don't know if you can see, there's the light yarn that was tied right there and it's been captured under this strand. Okay, turning back, turning over to the front again, just continue on and I'm going to one more time show you where to put the hook when we get over to the other edge of this square. And I also want to point out that when you get to this vertical bar, sometimes it gets short or it disappears. So make sure that you have seven loops on your hook, two, four, six, seven, before you work into the next row. So here we are at the next row. We're not working under the front loop or we're working under the back loop. And there is a, another loop behind there. I usually have to turn it over to see it. So in there and in there. And I do usually have to manipulate it with my fingers, which is an extra step, but it makes it so worth it in my opinion, because the seam you get along this edge between the two strips is just much nicer looking. Okay, ready to do our ferris wheel flip. Bring the light yarn over the medium. Continue by finishing that last stitch. Okay, I decided to change to white for the middle square because the other blue color was just too similar in appearance to this medium and I couldn't see it. Okay, so I just want to show you with lighter colored yarn what I'm doing here when I get to the edge, the left edge of the squares. So I've got two, four, six, seven loops on my hook and then I insert my hook under the back loop and there's a, another loop behind it that usually requires some manipulation with my finger. But let me show you without my big fingers in the way. I'm going under this loop and this one behind it. 
So you see there's the front loop and the hook is going under the back loop and the one that's even farther behind that. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and now we have eight loops, two, four, six, eight, and we yarn over and pull through two at a time. Ferris wheel. Hopefully that's a little easier to see in the lighter colored yarn. Okay, I've now completed nine squares. And I have pulled the both colors through the last stitch. And this would be where I would cut the yarn. Now, I'm only going to cut one color because I'm going to use the other color to make the edging round. And the pattern says to leave the dark color and use that for your edging round but because it's harder to see I'm going to cut the dark one on this sample and use the medium color. All right I have done a chain one which counts as a single crochet and now I'm going to work a modified single crochet so I insert under the vertical bar and one of one or both of the horizontal strands next to it yarn over pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two and that is a modified single crochet I'll do another one and that is another modified single crochet. The first stitch was a chain, which counts as a single crochet. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got seven modified single crochet stitches for seven stitches of this square. Next one, we go under the vertical bar and the strands next to it. single crochet. These strands that are left over from the second strip um, we can deal with later. We're going to um, weave in the ends later, but I just noticed that this one, this uh, white piece, is pretty obvious. So what we might want to do with that one is Thread it into a yarn needle and take it to the back and then we will weave that in later. That eliminates that little white spot. Okay, and then continuing across the modified single crochet stitches all the way over here. All right, I've worked almost all the way to the end. Let's count and see how many stitches we've got. Counting the first chain that I made, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and I need twenty-one because I've got seven, seven, and seven times three 
is 21 so I need a total of 21 stitches on this edge and so what I'm going to do is work one additional stitch between <coughs> this vertical bar and the edge stitch. So I'm going to work in between the two vertical bars or between the vertical bar and the edge stitch. So I'm going in this area right here under two horizontal strands. And there I have a single crochet. So I've now got 21 single crochet stitches along this edge. And the corner is two chains. And then I will work a single crochet in the end of each row all the way back or all the way to the other end. And just to make sure that I'm getting this first stitch in the correct place, I like to count backwards from this last dark blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right there is where I'm going to insert my hook. And I'm doing it under two strands and make a single crochet. And then I work a single crochet in the end stitch of each of these rows under two strands and continue on down to the other end. Okay, I've worked almost to the other end and I want to count to make sure I've got 21 stitches. So I start with this stitch right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and I need twenty-one. So I need one more stitch. And here at this uh, corner I've got two little holes and I'm going to choose this hole for my twenty-first stitch. And then chain two. And then work along this end. So the first stitch goes in that first hole. Then let's take advantage of these vertical bars. So under the first one and the next two strands, horizontal strands, single crochet. There's my third single crochet. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. And the seventh. I need this horizontal bar and two, I'm sorry, this vertical bar and two strands next to it. That one's tight. Okay. Let's count. That should be seven single crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, good. Now for the next vertical bar, it's light blue under that and two horizontal strands to the left of it or next to it. Continuing on in the same manner. All right, let's count the stitches along this edge. One, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I need one more. So this is another case where I'm going to be working between the vertical bar and the edge stitch for my last single crochet. And then chain two for the corner. And we will now work along the last side of the square. And this is pretty easy because there is a nice, what looks like a single crochet stitch along the edge. So, single crochet in each one to the other end. Okay, I have one more single crochet. And then chain two. And I will do a needle join here, and I've already snipped my yarn, so I'll pull the yarn out, thread it into a yarn needle, and insert it front to back under the two horizontal strands of the first single crochet, pull it through to the back, insert it back into the chain from which it's coming front to back, and the um, V that I just made by this invisible join provides the top of the first single crochet that we made on the edging. Now, on the back, this is what we're going to do to weave in the ends. I'm going to bring the needle over here to a strand that's close to the first single crochet and then weave in under the edge stitches pull the yarn until it's taut but not puckering those nice edge stitches on the corner. And then I go back the other direction and many times I'm satisfied that that's enough bulk and I don't believe that it's going to come loose but just in case if you feel better you can do some knot tying on the back. I know some people don't like knots I don't mind them in crochet because it seems like crochet is nothing but a bunch of knots anyway. And then it's time to weave in all of these ends on the back. Okay, I have now completed this portion of the pattern. I have woven in all the ends on the back, and here is the front, and by the nature of Tunisian crochet, the uh, square needs to be kind of blocked a little bit because the width may not be the correct size in relation to the height. but just by hand blocking it. I have six and a quarter this direction and well, I guess I blocked it a little too much. About six and a quarter top to bottom. Close enough. <laughs> 